In youth soccer, there's an overemphasis on offense, but strong defense elevates attacker performance. By honing defensive skills, we challenge attackers to up their game. In places with weak defense, attackers aren't pushed to excel. True talent thrives when faced with real challenges. Today, we're taking a behind the scenes look at an APFC training session. Have you ever wondered what are the secrets of one versus one defense? Well, you're in for a treat. Discover the APFC methods from the inside. First, if you're dropping by our channel for the first time or have been lurking without hitting that subscribe button, now's your chance. Join our soccer loving family and get front row seats to two awesome videos every week. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. In this field, you'll observe players engaged in a focused activity. They skillfully dribble the ball, demonstrating keen spatial awareness to prevent collisions with their teammates. In our first drill, we utilize a square formation. Each player is equipped with a ball. The primary objective is to displace another player's ball from the square. Successfully achieving this allows the player to attempt a goal in a designated miniature goalpost, earning them a point. This drill is designed to simulate an open and flexible environment. Such a setup is instrumental in fostering players' creativity. It compels them to think independently and devise strategies rather than rely on predetermined solutions. Throughout this drill, keen observation will reveal players' heightened spatial awareness. They remain constantly vigilant of their surroundings, ready to capitalize on any opportunity to dispossess a peer. We've incorporated a competitive aspect to infuse an element of enthusiasm and motivation. Players vie against each other, each aiming to be the top scorer. Building upon the foundation set by the first drill, Drill 2 introduces a heightened level of complexity and team dynamics. The spatial constraints remain consistent, emphasizing the importance of skill and strategy within a confined area. In this drill, players are grouped into two distinct teams. One assumes the role of the offense. Their primary objective is to maintain possession of the ball. Their challenge is to navigate the space, dribble effectively, and protect the ball from the opposing team. The other team, the defenders, are tasked with a clear mission, regain the ball within a stringent 15 second time frame. After that, they can score small goals. This time constraint forces the players to press a high rhythm to recover the ball as soon as possible. These drills help us enhance the player's offensive creativity and unpredictability, which is crucial for youth ages. Here, we delve deeper into the 1v1 scenario where the defenders have the opportunity to score upon ball regain. For attackers, the initial touch is pivotal. It sets the stage for the ensuing duel. We aim to defend the defender in motion. Beating the defender will be much more challenging if we face a one versus one static. What is an important ball for the attacker? Come on. Speak louder, please. First touch. How has to be this first touch? Small, why? Oh, okay, B depending on the distance, gonna be short, yes, gonna be uh, a short touch or a long touch. But if I do a short touch, what will happen? Who has advantage, the defender or me? The defender, because I'm stopped, yes, and I have to run. And the defender is reducing the space. Yes, but, again, Avelina. What will happen if this first touch was to double to me? Is attacking the player. What will happen? that this player has to stop, because if she's coming again, repeat. Yeah, pass me the ball. First touch, uh, forward, and now I can run. Yes, I'm in motion. If I stop, if I'm static, it's easier for the defender. Try to that first touch, uh, be against the defender. However, our primary focus today is on individual defensive concepts. A fundamental aspect of our defense is understanding and acting upon our intentions. In this context, the primary objective is to influence the attacking player's movements, guiding them towards areas we deem advantageous for our defense. What we want as a defenders? What do you want to do? To delay? Just delay? Or you want to guide the attacker? Guide the attacker, yes? Me as a defender, I can choose where the player uh, will go. If I pass the ball, yes? and I know that she's right footed and I'm here, what I'm closing, this space, what I'm forcing to do, go here, go to his left, 
Yes? And right now I can press the player. Yes, then I try to I pass the ball. I go fast. Yes, to be close from the player with the distance. When I'm arriving, I slow down. And then I have to try to, with my body profile, guide the player to one side. Once the defensive intention is clear, it's vital to guide players on its execution. This involves swiftly approaching the opponent, decelerating at the right moment and, crucially, adopting the correct body profile. The aim is to direct the attacker subtly towards a specific area while poised to sprint and seize the opportunity to intercept the ball. A frequent mistake in this scenario is the player's body orientation. Players often adopt a frontal body profile failing to channel the attacker in the desired direction effectively. To address this, emphasis must be placed on the correct body profile. The question remains, what should be the ideal body profile? And what's the underlying goal behind it? Ready? With my position, this, yeah, look, change. Change to me. Yes, with one foot, I'm closing this door and I'm forcing her to go here. the far leg is instrumental in defensive situations. Positioned correctly, it serves as a barrier that can effectively block the attacker's path, preventing them from dribbling past with ease. Positioning this leg on the same line as the ball allows the attacker to dribble on the defender's blind spot. The foot is on the same line as the ball. What will happen? Stop. Do you have a space here or not? Yes. yes. I'm closing the space. I'm blocking the space. No. Okay, to block that space, this foot cannot be on the same line as the ball, has to be behind the ball. Okay, and right now what's happened? I'm, I'm closing the space with that, that foot, yes or not? Yes. yes. Okay, when you're defending, you must be careful that your foot is not on the same line, because if I'm here, this player can beat me, yeah? But if I'm here, I'm blocking this space. Okay, come on. The third common error pertains to weight distribution. How players position and balance their body weight can either facilitate or hinder their ability to move towards open spaces effectively. The direction in which the body leans is pivotal in determining the player's agility and responsiveness. Let's delve into a few illustrative examples. Good action. But when you act like this, you cannot be just stop or with your body weight here. You must be ready to run here. Okay? Go. Also, our players may be in a high center of gravity and use long steps to defend the action. It makes the players slower in the reaction. Also, a long step means more time unbalanced with no capacity to react and change direction. Another prevalent error is the premature dive-in. Players often lack the patience to bide their time for the ideal moment to challenge for the ball. When a defender rushes in hastily, especially if the attacker has firm control of the ball, it becomes effortless for the attacker to sidestep and outmaneuver the defender. But I have to be waiting. Yes, be patient. Look the ball and be patient. When she's doing the long touch, I can tackle the ball. Okay? If not, it's easy. Come here. Quick, 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 quick. Bye. Yes? I must wait. And I must see the ball. 
A common oversight is the underutilization of arms and forearms in creating an advantage. Many players overlook the potential of their arms in gameplay, yet their effective use can be pivotal in gaining positional advantage and either recovering or shielding the ball. Yes, and when she when she's making the touch, long touch, I press her. I press with the arm. Yes? When I try to tackle the ball, I have to touch uh, to touch with my arm. Before attempting to tackle, it's essential to employ the arms to destabilize the opponent, setting the stage to regain possession. But what if the attacker missteps like turning their back or executing a flawed technique? Such moments are golden opportunities. It's imperative to capitalize on these lapses and apply pressure immediately. One second. You see what happened with Tierney right now? She's waiting or not? Are you waiting or are you pressing the ball? Why? How was she's first touch? Good or bad? Bad. Okay, if you see that the other player has a bad technical action, yeah, a bad control, a long touch, it's time to press the ball, okay? You must be patient if the, ball, the, if the player, the other player has a double control, but if not, you can press the ball. Okay, well done, go, next one. That brings us to the end of this video segment. While we've wrapped up this discussion, our training session delved further into two versus one scenario. Curious about that? Drop a comment and we might showcase it in the next segment. If this video provides value, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to activate notifications for more insights. Keep learning, keep coaching, keep inspiring.